What's up everybody? My name is AJ and I want to talk today about appendix carry because this is something I get a lot of questions about still in 2023 and it seems like a video is going to be very helpful for people to understand uh, the system I use to carry, kind of how I got here, some of the components, um, the different things that I figured out work well for me. And um, you know, all this is refined over 10 years of concealed carrying, mostly a Glock 19, trying to figure out what the best system is that works for me. And I want to be super clear, I am not a expert by any means in a lot of these things. However, what I can tell you is this is what I figured out works for me. And I've learned this through trial and error, through spending a fair bit of money. And I want to share these ideas and thoughts with you so that you can look at this system, evaluate if it would work for you, and then uh, apply it to your own carry situation. So I started off when I was 21 carrying, it's actually a Glock 23. It's the same gun I have now, but um, I converted to a Glock 19 later. So a Glock 23 and 40 caliber in a leather, um, basically four o'clock inside the waistband holster. Um, that was never really a great system. It was always insanely uncomfortable. And I also never liked not being able to discreetly check the status of whether I was printing, um, you know, just anything about that. The whole like four o'clock carry system just really wasn't, I wasn't a fan of it, wasn't comfortable. I really, I never knew what the status of my firearm was. Um, it's always like on my mind that it's behind me and that if someone was to come up behind me, I would theoretically be at a massive disadvantage if there was a struggle over my gun that they knew was there and I didn't know that they knew it, right? So I never really was a fan of it. And appendix carry back when I started carrying was just starting to be a thing. It was kind of trendy on uh, Instagram in the early days, but it took me a while to adopt it, to be totally honest. And certainly I thought a Glock 23 was much too large to use for that. So eventually I got into some different carry guns, found my way into a Glock 43, so a small nine millimeter. And I was making holsters at that point, so I made an appendix carry holster for it. Long story short, I fell in love with it, and then I eventually worked my way all the way backwards to carrying that same Glock 23, now converted to a Glock 19, and I carry it appendix every day. You can see it's right here, and I'm gonna show you exactly what I do, how I got to this point, how to be safe about it, uh, what to pay attention to when you're drawing, presenting, and holstering, and so forth. And I'm gonna show you the things that I use uh, as far as my carry system goes that I feel are extremely important for successfully carrying appendix. I have a Glock 19 in a TH holsters inside the waist waistband light bearing holster. This holster is actually a Glock 17 length. And I got it that way because I have heard and wanted to test that a longer holster actually is easier to appendix carry. And after years of carrying Glock 19 length holsters, I switched to the 17 length and sure enough, it is actually much more comfortable and easier to carry and seal. I have a Neomag alias um, belt clip and receiver on it. I also have a mod wing on it to help push the grip just a little bit more into my hands. I carry a spare magazine in my front to left pocket with a Neomag holding that in place. And I carry a Live the Creed, um, basically a pocket trauma kit in the same pocket as my magazine and my Neomag. Um, the foundation of all of this is really the belt. Um, this is just a basic EDC belt from Blue Alpha Gear, but it's sturdy. It's an inch and a half tall. It's thick enough to support the weight of a loaded firearm, but not so thick and rigid that it drives you nuts. And I often carry just in a t-shirt, just like this. In my opinion, um, no carry system is ever going to be completely, totally concealed, except for maybe a gun inside a bag somewhere. But generally speaking, you have to compromise somewhere. And for me, the best compromise was to have my firearm right in front of me to be able to check the status of it at any point with a simple glance and to wear shirts loose enough to cover it reasonably well and also to make sure my pants are sized appropriately so that it fits inside my pants uh, shorts in this case well so nothing is too tight and putting extra pressure against the holster in a way that's going to rotate it away from my body so this is the system i use every day what I'm carrying. I do dress up a lot. So if you're wondering, like, you know, maybe you can see a bit of my printing right now. One, I can tell you when I'm walking around, you're not going to notice it. And two, usually if I leave the house, I'm dressed a little more formally than this. I usually leave for church or work meetings. And if I got to do that, then I usually am wearing something like this. Right? And when I'm wearing something like this, a button down kind of loose form, not form fitting shirt, right? You are not going to notice that I am appendix carrying at all it completely melts away. So a couple of the key things with dressing, make sure your pants are sized up one size larger than you need them to be. 
Make sure your belt is sturdy and designed to bear the weight of a gun, but not so stiff that it drives you up a wall. And make sure your uh, clothes, at least your, uh, sorry, your shirt, at least in my opinion, is not um, like, you know, fit styled, right? You want it to be loose, kind of baggy. And I have had to go through a lot of shirts to find ones that work. Uh, loose button downs work fantastic. Um, T-shirts, it's like a coin toss. I'm gonna get some that are just like athletic fit and they're just too tight. It is real obvious I'm carrying. And then every once in a while I can find one that's loose enough that I like, that's comfy, and also isn't making it obvious that I'm carrying. So those are the things that I keep in mind when you know kind of building my wardrobe around this i also love like vests like hiking vests or like light outdoor vests um, they can be a fantastic way in the fall and spring to easily conceal carry no matter what i'm wearing underneath with just throwing a vest on and then walking out the door often when i talk to people about appendix carry i get the whole like well you're gonna shoot your pecker off or isn't it uncomfortable when you sit down or doesn't it poke and prod you in uncomfortable places all day and the answer is no, you're not going to shoot your pecker. Yes, it's insanely comfortable, or we, you know, those of us who do it wouldn't do it. And it does poke you and prod you in some uncomfortable places. And the thing is, you have to learn exactly where the holster goes on your body and the type of holster and the type of belt that you need to wear to find what's comfortable with that aspect. That being said, most modern appendix holsters have rounded edges, they're usually minimalistic. There's often we um, wedges that can go on the back or other comfort-ish accessories that you can attach to them that will make them more comfortable. But at the end of the day, uh, I found for myself, a Penix carry was by far the most comfortable way to carry a handgun every day through my life. So when you're sitting down, the holster essentially just rides up onto your abs and the gun is pointed down between your legs. It's really the simplest form of it. So. If you think like sitting in a vehicle, if you're carrying at three or four o'clock, right, your gun is pushing into your side, it's pushing into your hip. It's extremely uncomfortable. You actually have to sit slightly crooked in the seat so that the gun um, doesn't drive you totally nuts, right? When you're appendix carrying, your lap belt is going to come right across your holster. The gun's pressed against your abs. And actually it's extremely comfortable. I've done extremely long road trips, um, 12 hours appendix carrying no problem not a big deal that being said i do have a neomag alias receiver uh, mounted inside my truck and i do often unholster well un, um, unmount my holster from my belt mount and put it on the mount inside the truck and i do that for the simple reason of it's frankly just an easier place to store the gun especially on longer road trips the last thing that i want to go through here with this video, and I hope it was worth your time to watch this, is a lot of people are uncomfortable with the idea of appendix carry because you're pointing a gun at your crotch, right? And your femoral artery is down there, and it is extremely important to be exceptionally safe. And there are definitely firearms that are not as safe and as friendly um, for appendix carry, and I'm not gonna get into those. What I'm just gonna do is tell you what works for me. So I carry my Glock 19, um, I got a dry fire mag in here right now because I'm gonna show you some drills in a second. But I wanna show you my striker control device that I got from Langdon Tactical, okay? This device, I put my thumb on the back of my slide when I'm reholstering the gun and it makes the striker inoperable. It completely locks it from coming back far enough to do anything. And with the way a Glock works, the striker basically travels backwards to fully cock as you're pulling the trigger and then it goes forward as the trigger releases. So by making the striker so it can't move, you have essentially rendered the Glock totally dead. And that for me makes me feel exceptionally comfortable. The reason you have to pay attention when you're appendix carrying and you're holstering, which is really where most things go wrong is because uh, like drawstrings or other things can get down inside your holster, um, inside your trigger guard and jam between your holster as you push down, it can pull up against your trigger if something is through there the right way. And this happens every once in a blue moon. And if you go on YouTube, you'll find tons of videos of accidental discharges where people had something in their holster that pressed against their trigger while they were pushing down. So as far as uh, training goes, this is really the last, in my opinion, what was the most important element of deciding to put appendix carry. I wanted to be able to drive fire practice. Uh, like I wanted to know like what was a the best system for me to draw and actually shoot because at the end of the day we're all carrying to defend ourselves or someone else and at the end of the, uh, you know we boil it all down the draw and the presentation is really important 
So for me, what I found worked best is just to do some regular safe dry fire practice. So you definitely wanna make sure your firearm's cleared. In the case of right here, I have a dry fire mag in here. It's already rendered inert. There's no ammo in here. The mag is just orange safe, right? So assume you know what a dry fire mag is. And these are a great little handy tool for just getting some quick reps. But the idea is make sure your gun's safe, okay? You're gonna load, uh, slide down your holster just like normal. I fidget a little bit and I make sure things are, you know, reasonably how I'd walk out the door. And then dry fire in its simplest form is just practicing the process of drawing, presenting, finding your target, getting your sight on the target, shooting, and then reholstering or shooting again or whatever. So the basic steps are grab your shirt and rip it up. Firm grip on the gun. You want to get the gun out with one grip. You don't want to have to change the grip when you get the gun up. Come up, drop your shirt, build your grip here by your body. You want the gun pointed towards your target as soon as immediately possible in case you had to fire from a collapsed position like this. And then you're going to present out and find your, in my case, red dot, right? And then press out, squeeze your shot, come back. Okay, um, now you can do that again. Again, I've got pine paneling that you can see, and I'll just pick a random knot and shoot at it all day long, right? And then when you're done, this is where dry fire gives you the most benefit, in my opinion, because it gets you used to reholstering a firearm that's not dangerous, so that once your firearm's loaded, then you already are very familiar with mechanics. So you come back to collapse position, hand goes down, pulls up, I put my thumb on the striker control device, rotate it down. I look and feel the gun down into the holster with a single hand, and then put my shirt back down. At its core, that's the essential 101 process of dry fire. There's a million different things you can do with dry fire, but you gotta start somewhere. And this is what I recommend people start with, especially as they're getting themselves comfortable for appendix carry. So, if you made it to the end of this video, thanks for sticking around. I hope you found this valuable. If so, drop a comment below. Tell me what was the most valuable part of this. If you have a question, of course, drop it there. You will notice if you're watching any other YouTube videos, I am extremely engaging in the comments. I love talking to people. And if you really, really, really felt this was worth your time, give me a like and a thumbs up and ding that little bell just so that the next time I upload something, you're already gonna know it's valuable and you'll take a few minutes to watch it. Thanks so much.